Welcome to the fourth and final of our modules in the AWS Masterclass for Artificial Intelligence. And here we're going to be thinking about how do you scale the approach from a single use case to become an AI-driven organization. You might think, why not just do the same again and again and again? And actually, if you were to do that, you start to encounter bottlenecks. It's interesting. We've seen customers where they've done that, and their data scientists are often start working on hand-cranking the code pipelines and managing the maintenance. We need to shift, actually shift towards the thinking of becoming not just uh, repeating use cases, but becoming a factory. You know, think about production lines as an approach for machine learning. You know, one example where we've done this is with the Department of Work in Pensions. I talked about their MLOps use case for fraud earlier. In that, they had the challenge that their team particularly had to think about building a model on data, but they weren't allowed to see the full data. It was so kind of protected being full claimant data across the whole country. And then testing it on that full data set, and if it succeeded, moving it into production. That process of stepping through those environments, they wanted to automate that and script that to reduce the amount of human burden and reduce the amount of mistakes that got made along the way. Classic use case for MLOps. Across our team, we've actually helped a load of organizations with this particular challenge of how do you build out the capabilities? How do you increase the capacity to do this at scale? And we've identified the best practices. And it'd be great if in this section, we just talk through some of what those best practices really are. One element of this is really to be aware that as we scale this technology and the investment, we also scale the impact. And that requires additional leadership oversight. So on the executive sponsorship side, so allocating the resources required, but also monitoring the business impact that we seek to achieve in the first place, as well as the compliance leadership. So the ability to quickly make decisions on issues around the responsible use of AI. And we've talked about MLOps. I think we maybe need to think a bit deeper about what is MLOps and why we need it. I mean, the lack of automation in this whole area actually starts to waste talent and it adds friction and it really slows down delivery and it jeopardizes safety and jeopardizes compliance. So MLOps has many names, you know, MLOps, FMOps, GenOps, but thinking about them really, what are they? MLOps could probably be best thought of as a, a practice of doing machine learning, the data engineering you need and the DevOps that you need to put it into production and doing that through the orchestration of everything you need around the people, the process, and the technology. I often think about this in, in terms of journeys, and there's many journeys at play. We talked in the earlier module around that kind of life stage, how a use case iterates through the different elements of the journey from perhaps the opportunity and the ideation through to the defining of the particular business problem for that use case, through to how you're going to then build out the code to deploy it and monitoring it, that kind of life cycle of the use case. There's also the journey of the model code itself that you built, so that you're taking that from the experimental sand pit into the test environment and over into the production employment as you deploy it, that kind of journey there. There's a critical journey around data and thinking about the data coming from the kind of source systems, maybe your line of business systems, being extracted, landed into your analytical environment, features being built, ingested into the machine learning world, perhaps the experimentation world, all that deployment production world, as well as the data that flows back as you're doing the feedback loops and li linking those back in for continual improvement. And finally, you've got a journey of the infrastructure itself as you're standing up infrastructure for experimentation or standing up infrastructure for deployment and allowing that to scale on demand. So each of these four journeys need to be orchestrated. So they don't crash in a great big bottleneck or a logjam, but you're actually getting the massive throughput you need as all these journeys orchestrate together in something of a dance. One of the case studies that's probably worth thinking about is NatWest Bank in the UK. With them, they worked with us around MLOps and they looked to accelerate their time to value. You know, they knew that it usually took them 12 to 18 months to go from the idea on a whiteboard through to a deployed machine learning system. Working with us around MLOps approaches, they shortened that for the first thing we did together down to seven months. Big saving, but they didn't stop there. They kept accelerating. They actually got to being able to do 30 machine learning use cases in parallel in a four month time window. 
huge acceleration. They also invested really heavily in their people. 720 courses and certificates of completion at the end were undertaken across their team. One thing that really excited their data scientists was actually they reduced the time it took to provision the environments for them to work from two to four weeks down to just a few hours. You know, they used to have to raise a request to IT. The IT team would have to go work on setting up the environment, testing it, configuring it, and then passing it on to them to use. Now they've automated that whole process so that with an automated process, they can self-serve that environment. It has baked in the IT security guardrails, the data access and the governance that they need. A huge improvement for them. NatWest are now moving on and looking at generative AI as well and thinking, how can generative AI build on top of their ML ops and think about interesting use cases like personalization or like understanding how you can improve customer service by improving the chat experience for people. That's a great example. And I think it would be helpful maybe to highlight some of the six main capabilities that organizations need to invest in and build out to be able to do similar use cases or journeys like NatWest has done in the past. So the first capability would be around the business. You want to have a mechanism that allows you to continuously spot opportunities, qualify them and make them ready for development, as well as having a portfolio management in place that allows you to monitor the models once launched. Are they continuously achieving the business value that you are deployed them in the first place? The second capability is, is that around people. How do you actually acquire the, the right team? How do you train them up? How do you retain them? And how do you equip them over time so giving them the right kind of skills so that they can move towards being much more effective and productive in that environment? How do you work actually across your organization and start to think about a bit of a cultural evolution? I mean, one thing that interested me is in, in Amazon, whenever we have a business use case, we have to fill a form in to get permission to do it. And obviously that form has a whole heap of questions. A couple of them are actually all about ML. And it asks you, regardless of what the use case is about, is how will you use ML? And if not, why not? And it doesn't matter if the answer is no, but actually making everybody think about it shifts the mindset towards being an ML first organization. It's a really interesting approach to driving that cultural change that we're looking for. The third capability is around technology and how do you build out a technology platform? And this has several components, perhaps data. How can you make the data that your team need to get hold of discoverable so they can find it? How do you make it accessible so they've got the right kind of access and it's easy to connect to? And how do you make it controlled so that the right people see the right data for the right length of time and it's not kind of free for all? Technology platform. How do you stand up the machine learning experimentation environment for your data scientists? And how do you move on into that CI, CD, CT world that you described earlier so you can deploy things quickly and easily? How do you bake into that the use of foundation models? And how do you manage the access to those and the ingestion of data and outflow of data? As well as more widely the kind of incident management managing problems, managing incidents, and harvesting the knowledge from the work that they're doing. It's really great practice at the end of each project to actually have an artifact harvesting stage where you look to go, what have we built here that could become a building block for other projects? Another capability would be around governance. So you want to have a mechanism that defines how you prioritize opportunities. So you might remember the factors that we mentioned earlier in the modules. Also, you want to ensure compliance and manage risk. Specifically in the area of Gen AI, we shared that the foundation models do not have an understanding of the real world. So sometimes they start to hallucinate and make up facts that sound really convincing, but are actually not true. So in these scenarios, you want to spot hallucination or design your system the way that you prevent it in the first place. Additionally, you want to think about program management to have a defined mechanism of how projects are defined, staffed and executed. And security. Security is a hugely important area. You want to think very intentionally around how you're going to do vulnerability management and how you're going to put in place uh, threat detection. And it may well be that actually standing up machine learning models in production exposes endpoints in technical sense to people who could be hackers to attack them. And it's interesting that hacking into an endpoint for machine learning could start to unpick some of the data that is embodied within the model. 
and you will not want that. So you need to track who's accessing these and how they're being used. Operations, how do you actually ensure that you're being responsible in the use of ML in those operations? How do you pull in place those feedback loops so that you can track it? And it's really important to know that you know, the machine learning models are likely to degrade over time. They'll be as powerful as they're ever going to be on the first day you release them. It's kind of downhill from there. So you need that monitoring and that feedback loop, looking for that change, detecting it as maybe the data's drifting. The data you're using for inference moves away from the data you trained it on. Or maybe the accuracy degrades. So you know when retraining is going to be needed. So if you want to learn more about these six capabilities, be invited to have a look at the Cloud Adoption Framework for AI from AWS. Besides that, there are other support and guidance that you can consider. There's a couple of frameworks for the responsible use of AI, as well as certain rules and regulations that must be respected. We hope that we can soon congratulate you on the buildup of first operational capacity within your organization and maybe the setup of a first center of excellence that enables many teams across your organization to use machine learning. We hope we could demonstrate you the opportunity that AI, machine learning and generative AI can play in solving challenges within the public sector. You've seen how enthusiastic we are about how actually some of the biggest challenges of the public sector can actually be addressed with AI and ML. But it needs to be done carefully, responsibly, and with the right kind of adherence to the regulations. Yeah, we really hope that this masterclass has equipped you with the right tools and knowledge to just get started and go build your very first AI solution and many more in the future. We are really excited to see what you can build. So farewell and go build.